be warmly welcome ajk if not azad jammu kashmir two time prime minister sardar atik ahmed khan so he is here in today colombo so we warmly welcome him to sri lanka how are you sir thank you yeah and uh, simply what made you to be in colombo today thank you very much uh, i i have been invited by pakistani high commission colombo to visit this place and to participate in the uh, pakistani's uh, solidarity celebrations uh, with kashmiris so throughout the world pakistan government and the people of pakistan through their diplomatic missions and embassies and high commissions today 5th of february is the day when they celebrate solidarity with their suffering brothers of kashmir so i am here to participate as a guest so uh, basically would like to know uh, since uh, we sri lankans are also interested really about this issue and uh, uh, mostly the globally this issue is not properly catered what's happening in kashmir so my simple question is what is the background of kashmir issue well the simple background is that the south asian subcontinent known as undivided india was ruled by the britishers yeah. in late 40s when all three parties britishers and the largest political party of india uh, national congress and largest muslim party all india muslim league all three they reached at a consensus that there is going to be an independence so a principal uh, position was taken and uh, the 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 fundamental principle was uh, that majority areas uh, muslim majority areas would join pakistan and uh, hindu majority areas would join india so that was that was a kind of consensus independence that we we got on 14th uh, august 1947 so it was a negotiated uh, amongst three parties britishers uh, indians and uh, pakistanis so it was uh, britishers and hindu leadership and muslim leadership so it was a kind of negotiated independence and uh, bases were known as third zone plan it was it was it's it's a plan known as lord mount battle plan or third zone plan so which provided the bases on majority muslim areas would join pakistan and majority hindu areas would join india so so that was the background which was later on denied kashmir being the largest state among 562 states it was automatically supposed to be joining pakistan because mean, uh, because princely because states those day princely state yeah. kashmir was one of the largest princely state amongst 562 princely states of india so it was it was a uh, it was a overwhelmingly muslim majority state with with more than 87 percent muslims so automatically it was supposed to have joined pakistan but indian uh, army occupied it militarily on uh, in in october 1947 and uh, matter was taken to the united nation it was india which took the matter to the united nation and got a verdict that uh, there would be a free and fair plebiscite and the, the wishes of the people will be ascertained through a plebiscite whether they want to join pakistan or india so that's the i mean the background of kashmir so what is the stance of the united nations when it united nations simply continues the principal position taken uh on 14th august on the on the on the independence of pakistan and hindustan that uh, uh kashmiris there should be a free and fair plebiscite and kashmiris should be right given their right of self determination and they should decide uh that whether they want to join pakistan or to join india that is the position yeah so how, we know that there are a lot of uh, resolutions have been passed in united nations but the question arises here is that how ever india respected all these resolutions that's a question india has never respected all these resolutions the basic resolution uh, first resolution and second resolutions both were passed on the request of india it was india 
who took the matter to the United Nations. It was not Pakistan, it was not the Kashmiris, it was India uh, who took the, to the, the case to the United Nations and, and got a verdict that, that this will be the modus operandi to resolve this issue. But later on, India never ever cooperated. More than 17 resolutions have been there and uh, hundreds of rounds of talks between Pakistan and India, but India never cooperated and never accepted the position. The, the, the India's leaders made the commitments with the Kashmiris. Indian leaders made commitments with Pakistan in writing, verbal, interviews, speeches. And finally, they, they committed their position in the United Nations, but they did not maintain that position. So that is one of the reasons the denial of India and non-cooperation of India has prolonged this issue. So, why these resolutions? I mean, not even a single resolution could not be implemented. I mean, because be, 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 reason, because yeah. of the non-cooperation of India, because yeah. of the denial of India, so because of the, the intransigence the of India. India did not cooperate. Pakistan has always been asking uh, for the implementation of these resolutions. But it was India which somehow or the other, whenever they were weak internally, they said we are not in a position. Whenever they were strong internally, they said we don't need to resolve. So, uh, the, unfortunately, it, it is India who is the main uh, impediment uh, in resolving these issues. This, this issue. So that's why, since uh, this Kashmir issue and the uh, this Palestine issue has been one of the oldest, two oldest issues in the world. So yes. Unresolved disputes, whereby both uh, are majority Muslim areas. Yes. So. Uh, what is the point of, uh, I mean, the viewpoint of Pakistan and Pakistan's point of view when it comes to this, you know, it's more than now seven decades that has been prolonged and been lingered, you know, matter with India or other foreign elements. But pa yeah. what's the point of... Pakistan? Pakistan's position has been very clear in Kashmir. One, that Pakistan also refers the case to the United Nations and stands committed that United Nations should implement its resolutions and hold a free and fair plebiscite and the wishes of the people should be ascertained and it should be the people of Kashmir. Yeah. Whatever the decision people of Kashmir would take, Pakistan is ready to accept. So Pakistan's position is very clear. Pakistan has always been willing to negotiate with India for bilateral talks. Pakistan has always been uh, ready uh, to, to, to accept the mediation, third party assistance and Pakistan has always been willing to associate Kashmiris in the talks. So whatever the suggestion was presented uh, to solve this problem, Pakistan has all along been, co been co cooperating. But it is India which has never accepted, uh, which has never fulfilled its, its commitment. Its promises. Yes. And promises. What you made. Yeah. As Honorable Prime Minister, what is the impact of, you know, this uh, 5th August action by India? I mean, by India in Indian occupied or administrated Kashmir, simply they're revoking the autonomy, autonomous status. It is not only economy, it, yeah. is, it is revoking uh, Article 370 and 35A, yeah. or which, which, were in, uh, which were protecting the demographic position of and the special status of the of state of Jammu and Kashmir. Yeah. So, uh, uh, after uh, removal of these articles, now India has deployed more than one billion army there. Yeah. So the, 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 the condition is getting worse day by day. Srinagar, more than nine million people, they are under complete lockdown without roads, road access, without communication, without electricity, without access to market masks, schools, hospitals, even New York Times, a famous American newspaper, reports that the hospitals of Srinagar have turned into graveyards. This is what the New York Times says. So, so CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera, Washington Post, Washington Times, and all international media, if you say, if you, if you go through, uh, they, 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 they have rejected Indian position on Kashmir. So this is the sixth month that Kashmir is under complete lockdown complete curfew and under highest military concentration anywhere in the world. In the world, yeah. And it, it, it happens and it keeps on going. Simply, you have uh, brought me to that there. India's, you know, this council general in New York, uh, Sandeep Chakravarti, as controversial statement in US, 
by calling for the adoption of an Israel model in Indian administrated Kashmir. Demographic changes. Well, so, well, yeah. well, well, you see, yeah. P5. It's a very serious Security statement. Council members, yeah. five members of the Security Councils, they have held two deliberative sessions on Kashmir situation yeah. in less than a six month time. Yeah. So, uh, the European Parliament, more than 700 members of the European Parliament, they have rejected Indian position on Kashmir. Yeah. So, there has been a, a hearing in the American Congress subcommittee. So, they have not accepted the uh, Indian position on Kashmir. Not only Indian position on Kashmir, simultaneously two things. One, the Citizenship Act within India and India's position on Kashmir. Yeah. Both have been, I mean, this, this has been a source of escalating the situation and pushing it towards a war-like situation. So, uh, uh, no standard element in the world is, is ready to accept India's position on Kashmir. So, so the, the statement made by the Indian diplomat in New York is, is, is simply a bundle of lies and uh, it is highly unacceptable. Yeah, uh, Honorable Prime Minister, the, another question arises is why, I mean, you were in two terms in 2009 and uh, till 2010 and 2011 and 2006 and till 2009. So, simply, why these big powers are not playing its role? Let us talk about, let us be frank about this OIC organization of Islamic cooperation, Muslim states, predominantly Muslim majority states. Why not these countries are playing their role? And you would have put your utmost effort when OIC, you were in power. Yeah. OIC has been all along passing very strong resolutions asking India but India being a big economic power and vested interest and a big market for the Western society yeah. and, and in, the, in the presence of Soviet Union uh, she has a different game to play with the West. Now in the absence of Soviet Union they have the Chinese bogey to sell that the Chinese containment policy of the West. So, so each and every time India comes out with the new excuses and uh, sells it to the West and uh, befools the world community. So, uh, I think now, with this latest position uh, that Security Council members and UN Security Council and American President talking again and again about mediation and coming into this issue, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, it, 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 it seems to me uh, that now it will not, it should not take very long that, that, that when world powers uh, feel like they should uh, interfere. To, 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 to some interference, some assistance, and uh, some kind of third party mediation to be arranged so, so that uh, there, is a, there is a resumption of dialogue between Pakistan and India, and things come on the table of negotiation, and Kashmiris are associated, and uh, finally, some, some political, uh, peaceful, uh, amicable negotiated settlement uh, With comes out. With the good office. Yes, the Honourable Prime Minister, what is the impact of this non-resolution of Kashmir issue, I mean, on the prosperity of whole region, because we know more than eight states are there, whole, so we suffer a whole lot. Whole region is, South Asia is suffering, Sark region is suffering, so there is a arm race, there is a nuclear arm race, and uh, the whole region is being pushed against wall, and whole region is, is, is being pushed towards a, a nuclear war-like situation. So Kashmir is surrounded by three nuclear, uh, new, new countries, Pakistan, uh, India, China, and uh, then the, 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 the NATO forces uh, placed in uh, Afghanistan, they are all nuclear-backed states, Russia there. So it is in, it, uh, Kashmir has become a, a nuclear ring, and it is, it is, it is, it is no, not an easy proposition to, to, to be neglected. It, it, it has, sooner or later, it has to be taken into proper account and serious note has to be, uh, serious consideration has to be given to it and I think now it is the right time that world powers should come in and uh, facilitate dialogue between Pakistan, India and Kashmiris and a tripartite negotiation with the assistance of foreign powers take place and some uh, peaceful settlement is found out. So do you think this uh, current Prime Minister of India Mr. Modi's, his policy will be an impediment for the resolution of Kashmir issue. 
Well, Mr. Modi has has designs as 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 of Hitler. He has Nazi designs. He has designed for expansion. He has anti-minority designs. He is a threat to the Muslims. He is a threat to the Indian Christians. He is a threat to Sikhs. He is threat to Tamils. He is threat to Bizos. He is threat to Assam. He is threat to Nagaland. He is threat to Khalistan. He is Punjab. So he, Nubudi and his policies, people have seen him in Gujarat. So he is he, in India. He is known as a butcher. You are referring to 2002 incident. Is yes, 2002 yes. incident. I mean, a prime minister who is not allowing uh, Rahul Gandhi to visit Kashmir and the foreign ambassador to visit Kashmir. So, uh, so what what kind of policies do you demolish? Uh, de demolishing the Bab Babri Mosque and Golden Temple and all these uh, actions against uh, non-extremist Hindus, even even untouchables, Dalits, Dalits low-caste yeah. Hindus are in, uh, under great threat. So it is not only the Muslims are the Kashmiris, the whole region uh, is, 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 is at stake. So we are simply saying 1.8 billion population now. Uh, the, the, yes, the South Asian population is under serious threat by Modi. So India is ruled. It's a very serious statement. Yes, 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 yes. I, I tell you, I tell you, honestly, tell you, it is not, it is, it is not something out of reaction. It is the genuine, genuine analysis. analysis. I mean, the European Parliament uh, they have shown, noted their serious concern. Seven hundred members, they, 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 they evolved a consensus that these policies are not acceptable. So, uh, Assam people, one millions of. Assami Muslims, yeah. they, 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 they have gone, uh, I mean, uh, under open sky. They have been pushed out of their homes and hearths. I mean, th th this is not uh, one community. Whole India is. The growth rate, the, 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 the growth rate of India has gone down below two and a half percent. I mean, economy. Yes, uh, yes. You know, there is a very serious economic crisis due to the Modi's policies. India is, is very seriously suffering economically. The corporate sector has gone upset. And the world investors, Western investors, who have great in, in interest in India, be it their own interests or against China or whatever, but, but they, 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 are, they are very much upset with this uh, economy going down and down. Yeah. So finally, the Prime Minister, honestly, what would be the future of Kashmir if it is not resolved immediately? Well, I'm, 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 I'm not pessimistic. I'm quite optimistic. I see a bright future for Kashmiris. 600,000 people have sacrificed their life. And India has gone to, to, to maximum possible extent by using, by deploying 1 million troops, by using the courts, administration, economy, culture. Each and every weapon India had in his pocket, they had, they, she had used it in Kashmir, but ultimately failed. So people have decided till, till, I mean, as long as Kashmiris live, they will continue the resistance. So when, when this position comes, then when people start enjoying dying and sacrificing their lives, you cannot stop them from, so nothing, freedom, nothing, yeah. nothing can countervail our, our, our struggle to victory. We will continue till lost Kashmir is there. So you said uh, another series, 600,000 people sacrifice their lives. In these 72 years, yeah. more than 600,000 people have been martyred, martyred by the Indian occupation forces. Simply killed. So who will be responsible for these deaths? I mean, this is the Indian army. It is a war crime. I mean, innocent people, armless people, defenseless people, people without arms and ammunition, innocent people. The youngest girl who was gang raped, her age is eight years. She yeah. was gang raped by the Indian Army, taken to, 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 to some other place, and 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 and, and is and her herd, uh, and and she she was, she was um, butchered and, and and killed and cut into pieces by by the occupation forces. Yeah, we know that. So, uh, thank you very much for joining us, Thank Honorable you, Prime Minister. Thank you, thank you, thank you.